My name is Grady, I'm with Simply Embedded, and today I'm going to show you how to create your first project on FPGA using Vivado Design Suite software. You will learn how to go from not being able to turn on an LED using a switch to being able to do that. So let's get started. In order to accomplish this project fully, you will need a development board that is Silence SOC or FPGA based. If you don't have a development board yet, you can buy one using one of the links in the description below. So make sure you check them out. Also, you will need Vivado Design Suite software. If you want to know how to download and install this software, check this link right here. But if you just want to learn about FPGA programming, feel free to stick around as I'll be talking about it as well. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment sections below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Now, let's begin with the tutorial. Now open up your Vivado Design Suite software. You'll be prompted with the welcome page. Click on Create Project. In this window, click Next. You can name the directory as Simply Embedded and the project as Switches to LEDs. Then click Next. Choose RTL Project here. Click Next. Skip Add Sources step. Click Next. Skip Add Constraints as well. And click Next. At this point, you would choose the FPGA or SOC chip that your development board has. You can follow the letters and numbers on the chip to successfully complete this part. Choose General Purpose as Category unless you know that isn't correct. In my case, from the chip on my development board, I can see the SYNC trademark which indicates that the board I have is using SYNC 7000 series SOC as family. Also, from the chip, I can read that the package is CLG 400. Last, the speed grade is negative one, which can be found from the schematic of this board. You can also select the temperature grade, but we're gonna skip this step right now. You will now have four options for parts to choose from. You can finalize the decision by following the exact code on the chip on your board. So in my case, I can use the product code XC7Z007S to finalize which part to choose. After you've done this, click next, then click finish. Project window will pop up. You can see the project summary here, which gives you an overview of your project, such as project name, part name, etc. The target language for this project is Verilog HDL, which is hardware description language used to describe hardware. On the left side, you can see the flow navigator. Project Manager includes all necessary things to manage your project. You'll be able to learn more about it as you follow my future tutorials. Next, you can see IP Integrator from where you can create block designs, which I will show you how to do as well in the future. After this, you can see Simulation section which will be covered in the future as well. RTL Analysis stands for Registered Transfer Level Design and we'll be discussing that in the future tutorials as well. Synthesis and implementation are two processes that are necessary to generate bitstream which can be used to program your FPGA. Last, program and debug which is used to program and debug your device. Now, go to the Sources tab. Right click on Design Sources folder and choose Add Sources You'll be prompted with Add Sources dialog. Click on Add or Create Design Sources. Click Next. Click the plus sign to choose to create a file or press the Create File button to create one. Name the source file as Top and press OK. Click Finish, then click OK and press Yes. The source file top that you created has shown up under Design Sources folder. Double click to open the top module. If you want to fill out the comment section here, feel free to do that. I'll just delete it for now. You will see Timescale on the top. Timescale is a reference for simulation files, which I'll show you how to handle and use in the future. At this point, before starting to write the code, you want to pause and think about what you want to design. In FPGA programming, you're not just doing some simulations on computer, you're making actual physical connections on your development board. You're making connections to some wires that are connected to the FPGA using configurable logic blocks, CLBs, interconnects, and some input-output blocks. You can think of it as connecting a wire in an FPGA so that one end of the wire is connected to a switch and the other end to an LED. So, 
The final goal for this project is that when moving the switch physically on the board, the LED would turn on, which is not the case right now because we haven't finished our design yet. We haven't created that wire yet that would connect the switch to an LED. We want to create this wire. So how do we do that? Think of it as a system. In this case, our system consists of an input and an output. Our input is a switch and the output an LED. Thus, we can write it out exactly like this within the module brackets. Input switch, comma, output LED. Make sure that there is no comma after LED. Just the end of the parentheses and a semicolon. Now that we have an input and an output, we want to make the connection between these two. We can do this using a sign statement. We're going to assign the LED to the switch. Think of it as saying LED equals to switch, which can be translated to if the switch is turned on, the LED is turned on as well, which means that they are equal to each other. Technically, if we program this code into the FPGA, we should be able to see that if you flip the switch, we're able to see that the LED turns on, which is not the case right now. We need something else. In fact, we need to be able to say what pin is a switch and what pin is an LED on the FPGA. Currently, the software doesn't know this. Thus, we need to create a constraints file that would tell the software where is the switch and where is the LED. Right click on the constraints folder, select add sources. Make sure add or create constraints is selected and click next. Create a new file and name it switches LEDs constraint. Press OK and click finish. Go to constraints folder, click on the small arrow and double click to open the .xdc file. Use hashtag to comment within the xdc file and comment so that you can show where the LEDs and switches are in your code. So you want to follow the syntax as I'm showing you. Set property, we want to say DICT, then start curly bracket and write package pin and we will leave the space empty right now. Continue with IO standard LVCMOS 33. Close the curly bracket, start a regular bracket and type get ports, start and end curly brackets and close the bracket for the get ports. Finish with semicolon. Get ports will be your input or output from the Verilog module we wrote. For this line, we can say that get ports will be the LED we created. You need another line of code similar to this one. Now, you want to make sure this line will have get ports from switch. Make sure that the syntax is exactly the same, on point. Make sure you have switch here, lowercase, and same here. An LED here, lowercase, and same here. In order to finish writing the constraints file, you need the schematic for the board you're using. If you're using the same development board as I am, you can download the schematic from the link in the description below. When opening up the PDF file, go to page 6. From there, you can see the connections that are made to the FPGA. A lot of development boards have their own master XDC files already out there, so that you wouldn't need to write the XDC file in the first place. You could just copy paste their code and you can use it for your own projects. You can just look for the master XTC files on Google by looking up the board name and writing master XTC after that and just search that. So we want to use switch zero on the board so we can find switch zero on the schematic here and see which FPGA pin it is connected to. In this case, it is connected to R17. So let's write that to the XTC file now. This is the package pin number. Now we want to do the same thing for the LED. From the schematic, I can find LED0 and I can see the FPJ pin code for this is N20. Now write N20 as the IO standard in the XDC file. Press Ctrl S to save this file. Also make sure that you've saved your top module. Now we are ready to move on. You can go ahead and click on run synthesis and then run implementation. Technically, you don't have to do these steps one by one. You can click on Generate Bitstream and the software will automatically go through all three steps, Synthesis, Implementation, and Generate Bitstream. Now that the synthesis is complete, let's check out Synthesize Design before running the implementation. So the Verilog code that we wrote was turned into a logic level netlist, which can be used to go through implementation process. We can see our input switch and our output LED here. 
which is great. This is what we were expecting. Now we can go ahead and click run implementation. Implementation will check if all timing requirements were met. Also that all FPGA pins were mapped correctly and so on. If there are any problems in the design, you'll be notified via errors or warnings in the messages tab. If the design isn't very complex and large, don't worry too much about regular warnings, but still be cautious and question yourself and the software whether everything is correct. If the designs get more complex, we should be paying more attention to the warnings. Typically, if there's a big problem, you will see a critical warning, which might not let you generate the bitstream. Now that the implementation is complete, click on Generate Bitstream. After Bitstream generation is complete, open Hardware Manager. Make sure that your board is connected to the computer, turn it on, press Open Target and select Auto Connect. You can now program the device by clicking Program Device. You will see the top dot bit as a bitstream file. You can click program. Now you can see that the LED is turning on and off when moving the switch. Congratulations! You have finished the first FPGA programming tutorial. Great job!